I just think it's rude, ignorant, faultless. Your risks far outweigh the benefits. It's up to me to weigh up the circumstances that I'm prepared to risk. I just need to have my testicles checked. When I swing over, they sort of go gr glump. Oh. You're wow. in pain now. Oh. oh! Dotted, can you put your finger up my bum see if I've got a lot of poo up there? I mean, if I was going to go, fine. But, uh, I don't want to find I'm going to spend months almost like a vegetable. There are some risks of, of people having a stroke. The worst case would be that you didn't make it through. Yeah. Good morning, Putney Mead, how can I help? That will be Dr Neil and that will be between 9 and 11 this morning. We've got one appointment left, 8.38, that's doing well. I remember sometimes for 8.09 we've booked it all out, literally. So, because we've got a bit longer, what I've done is sort of made a bit of a list of things to, to talk about. Oh, I um, So, why don't... Before we go into that, mm -hmm. were there other things that you wanted to talk about today? Daughter, can mm -hmm. I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. if, if a woman is married to a bloke mm -hmm. and he beats her up, like black and blue, right? Mm -hmm. And she comes to see the doctor and he says, where did you get that? And you said, is your husband beating you up? And the dog mother, well, I turns around and says to the doctor, yes. Can the doctors do something about it? Mm. Why did you ask that? Do Can I... they do that, the, um, doctor? I know everything's changed now. Mm. What makes you ask about that now? No, no, it's... I wanted to ask you. Yeah. Well, of course, we could always help. I wanted to ask you, didn't I, Richard? Yeah, mm. because we was... We was um... I like that think... trial of retribution. Oh, okay. It's like... It's always like this, Doctor. A man shouldn't hit a woman, and a woman shouldn't hit a man. Mm. See, so... No, no we never done nothing, yeah. nothing, 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 nothing like that at home. No. Good. The stuff have been very good. Yeah. OK. Oh. Any... But you two are all right. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And you said you was going to mention the Doctor and about your bum. Every time I eat something, he goes right through my stomach. Is that... It gives me diarrhoea, yeah. diarrhoea, okay. and my bum has been very sore. Is that? Yeah. I've been wiping it, but it's been very itchy. Mm, okay. And when I go, I pass wind mm -hmm. in, my okay. st in my bum. Yeah. What about pain in your tummy? Are you getting anything? No. no. Does your tummy get bigger, have you noticed? No. No, it doesn't sort of puff out. Yeah. OK. And, um... From what you've said before, it sounds like there hasn't been any blood in there or anything. No. No, good. Okay. No. Fine. Is it better when you're not going to the loo so often? I know when I do a big poo, yeah. my bum gets very sore. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the very sore. Okay. You have to give it a few flushes before it really, you know, gets rid of it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know what it's like, Doctor. I do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. How are you? Not good, not good. Oh. I had the worst cough and cold I've ever had in my life. Did you? I had paroxysms of coughing every few seconds. I, in the end, I had to just hold my mouth shut and just cough internally. 
because it was tearing my oh, lungs dear. apart. It's a cough that comes from down here. It's not. It's not a light cough. It's a really a, a hacking cough. Right. I call it my graveyard cough. <laughs> You see, it's very difficult for me, and I don't really expect you to believe this, but the work I'm engaged in, there's a lot of occupational hazard. Things. What is it you do? I'm working in a healing ministry, it's Christian healing ministry, and of course it overlaps a bit with what we call the deliverance ministry. People will go off on tangents often when they're talking about their problems, and actually it's not really, it, not all of it is very relevant to that particular problem. Um, although they may think it is very relevant, um, it doesn't help us diagnose, may make a diagnostic decision, really, about what the problem is. When you go into the enemy's territory, he doesn't like it. And the devil is extremely clever at coming in under disguise. I mean, this morning, I just suddenly felt so ill. And then I thought, oh, this is just his back to his tricks again. And I find that it's what I call an attack from the other side. It's not a genuine thing. Right, well, with regards to your cough, I'm just wondering what the next step should be. I didn't really, didn't really address it. I, um, it was one of those moments where you, you just think, well, that's, that's a bit, <laughs> that's, I don't know where I'm going to go with that. Sometimes one of the medications can cause your ankles to swell, yes. and one of them can cause a cough, so I'm a bit reluctant to increase any unless we need to. Yeah. Now, I think the sensible thing would be to check your blood pressure again in a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. and then we can make a decision. Yeah. OK. Well, thank you very much. Good morning, Fanny Mead. Rachel speaking. My stomach's growling already. <laughs> just went... Blah, 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 blah. Can you get me some oh, peanut oh, biscuits and a packet of McCoy's or something, please? Thanks. Bye. Oh, is it one of your home-making options? Well, my mum, me and my mum made it. Oh, yes. what's up, Albert? Big bit. Come in, have yeah. a seat. Nice to see. see you again. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, um, well, yeah. That's, I really just want to renew my medication, really. Yeah. But I've got a bit, uh, I must admit, uh, Dr. Vajor, could you help me out with something to sleep, please? Because I think I'm sort of, I don't know, my brain would just want to let me sleep. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. Uh, so, yeah, I was sort of coming a bit insomniac and only getting sort of a couple of hours. You know what I mean? Okay. Why do you think you're not sleeping? My brain just won't let me. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's too much going on. Yeah, no. I'm trying to close my eyes and. Hmm. I'm not happy, you know what I mean? No. Anything in particular going on in it that you think might be stopping you from sleeping? Is there anything upsetting you or stressing you? Probably, yeah. Right. Okay, and what do you think those things are? I can't put a finger on it. Can we just check you over a bit? Is that all right? Yeah, 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 sure. All right, okay. Just want to take your, your jacket off for me. Just un 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 undo that for me. I can't. Okay. So you're living in a tent at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I think I've got that. That is it. My dad's a dentist, um, and he suggested maybe having metronidazole. OK. I think there's always a strong argument. If things are improving, mm -hmm. to hold off. Metronidazole is not the nicest drug. I actually wanted to see if I could get some amphetamines. I wouldn't necessarily be happy to prescribe sort of amphetamines. And how about steroid injections? Have you? I want to do the hydrolauric acid or whatever it is that they're doing. That's what I want to do. I appreciate if you can um, prescribe me with some diclofenic. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'd gonna... probably just use par uh, paracetamol. It's not or working. No. I think I'll find out. Diclofenic is the best solution for me. Take a seat. Right. Yeah, the reason I come to see you is yeah. I, out of the blue, yeah. they stopped my climber valve. Right. Now, I knew nothing about it was stopped because I should have seen someone march. Nobody told me I should 
see someone in March with this electronic stuff. How do you know? But the pharmacist should be relaying anything that we pass right. on. So that it is, it, because it's a new thing, I think there will be some hiccups. So I'm really sorry oh, if right. it hasn't but worked out But then I've for also you. been attending this surgery mm. more than any time in my life, probably. Um, and uh, I just think it's rude, yeah. ignorant, thoughtless to actually stop something without a, even telling me. It was stopped in June. Mm. But you see, because I only take one every other day, yeah. Dr Andrews, um, I, I wouldn't have ordered them yeah. since then. That's absolutely fine. But as responsible prescribers, we have to know that you've understood the risks of being on HRT at this stage in your life. And we have to document that. So, you know, your risks, your risks far outweigh the benefits at this stage when you've been on it for this long. And yeah. that's what all the research is saying and continues to yeah. say. So I think it's really just so that we can be sure that you understand that staying on yeah. it increases your risk yeah. of breast cancer, increases your cardiac risk. There are other, you know, it, it oh, yeah. does carry risks with it. But so, oh, you know, I think it's up to me to weigh up the circumstances that I'm prepared to risk. It is entirely up yeah. to you, and our job is to be absolutely certain yeah. that we just keep reminding you what those risks yeah. are, because yeah. that's what our job is. Yeah, so it is course, entirely absolutely. up to you. I entirely yeah. agree with you, but that, that's what that's about. Yeah. That's what's happened. Yeah. So well, if I'm I can told, reinstate yeah. it, yeah. So I'm not going to put this in your dosset box in that case. Right. But I'm yeah. getting... Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, just leave it to me to order it. Excellent. Good. Anyway, lovely to have met you. And you. Dr. I'm glad Andrews. we managed to sort that out this well, afternoon. Because I came in here absolutely. I, oh, I had steam dear. coming out of my ears. I really did. Um, I said that I was going to sit downstairs and sing, I will not be moved until I saw somebody. She means it. <laughs> Hello, Hi, Lisa Rain speaking. How can I help? Hi, Lisa. Are you OK? My GP surgery doesn't do injections, I don't do blood tests. So, actually, this is an exceptional practice, to mm. be honest. How much do you normally drink in a day, Stephen? Three or four strong cans a day, I suppose, yeah. And any thoughts of cutting back on your alcohol or getting a bit more help with it? Or does your outreach worker help you with that? Yeah, yeah, but it is from a drug and alcohol organisation, yeah. yeah, sure. Have you got your outreach worker's number? Yeah, I have. Can I have it? Yeah. Yeah, his name's um, Charlie. Sorry, mate. No, Do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah, if you can. Yeah? Yeah, if you can do it. Oh, someone's out of one. That's him. Yeah. Is that so? Yeah. That's him. Alright, Charlie. I can't right. speak to him actually. Sorry, I don't have to come on with you. Okay, no problem. I can speak right. to him actually. Yeah, sorry, I'm with my doctor, he'd like to talk to you. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm here now. Right. There you go. Hi, is that Charlie? It is Charlie, yeah. Charlie, hi, I'm Dr. Bavadia. Um, Stephen's just turned up. To see me today, I was actually just asking him to get me um, your number. Um, I, I, I'm sure, I'm sure you, you might be a bit busy at the moment. Do you, do you mind if I give you a ring, uh, maybe in the next couple of days? Is that all right? Oh, that's fine. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me a call tomorrow. Yeah. Cheers, Charlie. Bye. 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 Is it all right if I talk to Charlie about you? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think today you seem a little bit like as if you might have had a little bit. Quite a lot to drink. I very, yeah, I very bit to drink. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Will you make an appointment to see me in about a week? Is that all right? Uh -huh. And maybe right. next time, just just come with a little bit less alcohol on board, if that's all right. Just just so that I can understand you really, and that we're not jumping around. Is that is that all right? <laughs> all right. Thanks very much. All right, all right. Cheers. All right. All right. If lady um, needs an urgent appointment, so I'm going to put her on now. Hello, Charlie. 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 Hello,
Mm. Well done. Good. Good boy. We'll talk about it in a sec. So get yourself dressed first, and then we'll have um, a chance. Is my bun soaked? Doesn't look too bad, actually. No, nothing that I can feel in your bottom, but it doesn't mean it isn't higher up in your tummy. So I'm just going to have a look at the computer to see if we have that x-ray of your tummy, all right? Oh, I love. Yeah, so hold on a sec. No. You do have to go to Queen Mary's for your, your x-ray of your tummy. Hmm, because an x-ray can help us when we're wondering if there's um, lots of poo in your tummy. Yeah. I think that'll be a helpful thing because I'm trying to get a reason why sometimes you're having these, these runny tummies, really. Um, yeah. Is that all right if we get that done? All right, yeah. now. Okay. So get them to make the appointment for the blood test and for, for that thing. Okay. Oh, thank you, Doctor. That's the blowing test. There you go. Oh, thank you, Doctor. And do you, um, what soap do you use? Well, I use body wash, my darling. Because yeah. I it. think your soap maybe dries your skin out a bit. If it gets bad, I'll mm. have to come to you. Okay. Yeah. Sure, I like your jacket, by the way. Thank you very much. It's nice, Wait, isn't it? Richard, <laughs> it's not to early to be up with alone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I'll see you soon. All right, Doctor. See Take you. Take care, Richard. Bye-bye. Bye. Can I grow up? I will be a doctor. Do you? <laughs> oh, it's a very interesting job. You get to meet lots of lovely people. Oh! Oh! Warm this up, shall we? Hey. Hello. Oh, oh you're quite heavy. <laughs> If you open up nice and wide for me and say, ah. Uh, say, ah. Uh, Hello, sweetie. Is that a bit tickly? Yeah. <laughs> Is that a bit tickly? Yeah. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Mr. Hi. Hi. Come on in. Hi there. Come on in. Right. How can I help? It's just sometimes I get palpitations <laughs> and I get the odd dull. Pain in my arm. Can you describe it? <laughs> Just like a dull ache, really. Look at that helicopter. It's like a headache feeling, but except in your arm. And how long would it last for? <laughs> Is it all there all day? A few seconds. A few seconds. A couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, OK. And what are you doing normally when it comes on? Right, can you sh and let me talk to the doctor? I'll just ignore it. Just getting on with things. OK. Ashley, please. Ashley. Ashley, right. You've been warned so many times now. You probably right. should Now, come and sit down you. here now. Thank you. Um, <sighs> sorry, I, so... I was recently diagnosed with a hiatus hernia that came up in a chest x-ray. Mum, I think there's going to be a storm coming. Um, I can't concentrate. Please, can you be quiet? Look, I think there's going to be a storm no. coming. Um probably right. It's not. It's going to be sunny until Saturday. Um, right, can you stop? There's lots yeah. going on, isn't there? <laughs> How are you managing? <laughs> it's it's tough, but I manage. You're managing? Um, I've got gallstones, as you know. Yes. I've had history of gallstones. Right. And I've also had history of heartburn. <laughs> So, and, and what was it indigestion. that... If you've had this as the same pain for some time, what was it that made you call up today specifically about this pain? Because I keep feeling lightheaded. When did that start? Just this week. All right. Has so, anything else changed what? recently? No. Oh. Ashley, please. Some consultations no. are completely chaotic. Um, and that can be because of the GP. The things that the GP is dealing with, or what the patients, the chaos of the patients living, and you can literally see it playing out in front of your eyes, in the room. It's quite difficult to keep focused, and I'm always worried that I would miss something, and that's often where the discomfort is for me. Um, I actually think it might not be a bad idea to get some tests done to rule out the heart as a cause of this. Okay. 
Um, and actually, the, probably the best way to do it would be through the hospital for the cardiologists. Oh, OK, yeah. All right, so you'll hear from them. On there, yeah. Blood pressure and the oh, pumps. Thank All right. Thank you very much. Look at me. So I, I think I do keep my cool, but I, I worry that I've missed something. As people walk out and as the chaos leaves, I'm always left thinking, oh, you know, what have I just missed? There's something else there. Hello. Is it Mr. Morris? Yes. Hello, I'm Dr. Ernie. Yes, good morning. I usually see Dr. Andrews, yes, uh, the relationship, that. but uh, this is a man thing. Okay. It's not a matter of embarrassment, it's just that yeah, that's she doesn't have a penis. <laughs> you do. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> I just need to have my testicles checked. Mm. They feel swollen. Okay. They feel heavy, mm -hmm. so I noticed it two or three weeks ago during warm nights when I, I sleep naked. When I swing over, they sort of go glump, glump, okay. you know. Yeah. Um, there's a s slight pain at the root, mm -hmm. so being pulled. Two or three weeks you've noticed this? Two or three weeks ago, or mm -hmm. just realising, you know, it's, it's a warm night, but um, penis, as you know, gets very floppy, mm -hmm. but it felt more floppy than usual. You've also written on here, um, low oh, yeah. libido. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Se I'm just turned 75. I've not had a sexual relationship for years, mm -hmm. so yeah. if I do masturbate, it takes some time for, to get anything more than a... Really? OK. Yeah. I mean, I've been giving it more, it more attention because mm -hmm. of this. So. Yeah, no, of course. <clears throat> Have a seat up on the couch. What's your date of birth? Uh, and the name? Archie. Oh, I love that name, Archie. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Could I have an appointment, please? <laughs> I'm sorry, he probably doesn't sound anything like that. No, he doesn't. He's only born in 2003. Hello, it's Archie. <laughs> How are you getting on? Uh, since I last time saw you, uh, I'm out of tablets for blood pressure. When did you run out of tablets? About a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I've been a bad boy for the last you, two weeks. Yeah, well. So, and how are you feeling so this, in yourself? I think so when, I'm feeling much better. Are you? I'm feeling much better. Uh, how are the stresses? Uh, Do you remember last time you were going through a lot goes, of stress? Comes and goes, you know. I think it's my nature. I can't let go of things quickly. I want everything perfect in my life, you know, okay. especially in the business, you know. Okay. So if something is off a little bit, mm. I get very uptight. Right. You know, with my staff and all that. Okay. And lots of my friends have said to me, Ash, you need to chill out. I mean, we had this chat before. Yeah. You're putting yourself at a very high risk. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm being serious because okay. actually we're not talking about 10, 15 years down the line. If you carry on like this with these readings, with no. blood pressure, with that lifestyle, yeah. um, heart attacks and strokes are a, a very real possibility for you. something that was similar to asthma. I always have been suffering of coughing. Are you bringing any phlegm? A what? <coughs> the muscles that line the passageways of the lungs, uh, they tighten up. <coughs> we need to try and get the asthma under control, because at the moment it's not ideal. <coughs> oh, you are wheezy. Got a little orchestra going on in there. <coughs> <coughs> How will your wife manage if you have a a stroke? Difficult. I've seen people with stroke and I have an uncle had a stroke nearly three nearly three years now mm. and he's in a home care mm. and all his money what he's earned mm. is going in mm. looking being looked after mm. can't move can't talk okay he's like a cabbage sort of okay. thing and you know, I've seen a friend passing away so I think so you've experienced it, it I've had experience yeah and so I think we need to do make some changes now, and I agree, and I would support you. We talked about work stress. Work stress is biggest problem, and then 
another one factor is my dad living with me and it's getting a bit I know he's 89 years old it's mm. my responsibility to look after him but it's just getting sometimes a bit irritating you know okay sometimes you know he makes a lot of mess in the kitchen and when I see it mm. I said what is this dad come on things I tell him don't do it mm. just leave it there mm. he keeps on doing it and makes a mess mm. and that boils me up you know I'm just wondering what might help you what techniques could we try or could you try to stop yourself getting to a stage where you just boil over suddenly going from nothing you're not going to be able to change him no there's no, no way I can change him you know but we might be able to focus on how you change how things affect you yeah okay because I think that's where we could start okay you can't change him but how do we change the impact on you okay all right so you're I... in the same situation but you approach it differently okay I mean, there are other options. We have other options. If you're getting very stressed with this issue, uh, you know, we can always think about some a few sessions of counselling where you can just explore this with somebody who's not related to your family, and you can really work through what options you have. Okay. Um, and I think we need to do this together. So, what tablets do you need today? I need all, everything, okay. everything. And then, can I, can you have a think over the next two weeks? Okay. Between now and when we touch base, what else might help you okay. to manage the stresses? Okay. You know, just have an ideal world. What would help you? What do you need to do? What do we what do we need to focus on? Okay. We'll do the blood pressure, but what else might help you to focus on the stress? Okay. All right, yeah? okay. All right. Between us, I yeah, think okay. we can then get there because otherwise it, uh, all of this stuff I do is not gonna be worth, worth it, it if you're yeah. gonna go I off. I understand and that, do it's that. Not, it works both ways. Yeah, so okay. we if we're happy to do that. Yeah. Hello, Patney Mead, how can I help? Do you wanna go and take a seat on the first floor? <laughs> Hi, how are you? Fine, thank you. Nice to see nice you. Nice to see you. Right, what can um, we do for you? I've had a, an operation on my ear. He had to rebuild my eardrum. OK. Completely. When I came out of hospital, it was brilliant. Abs oh, I was jumping up and down. I could hear with both ears. But I, I had an infection, and ever since then, it's been driving me insane. Doctor, I am having a hell of horrible time and I get the most throbbing headache the mother of all headaches I, I kid you not and and it hurts it really made feel is a pain in the ear yeah, everywhere I get it all over all okay. over it makes like a, a bubble noise brr, brr. do you know what I mean mm. It's driving me absolutely insane I wish okay. to God I'd never had the operation I really do right now the past couple of weeks, I've been losing my balance. Right. Nearly fell a couple of times. I'm a chef, you see. And to, I'll be honest with you, um, Dr. King, I'm very, very worried because I use twin fryers and the temperature is 190 degrees. <laughs> yeah. And if I fall head first into one of them, it might as well serve me on a fish and, <laughs> as a fish yeah. and chips as well or whatever. <laughs> I'm just feeling for any lumps in your groin there. OK. So I'm just going to check your penis as well sure. as your testicles. All right. And where's this pulling discomfort that you get? It's really at, at the root. So I'll just examine your testicles, OK? Good. That's fine. Would you mind if I examined your prostate? Yeah, what does that mean? Put your so finger up my bum. Yeah, yes. that's right. Is that OK? Yes. So the way to do it is uh, roll over and face the wall. Yeah. And, um, well done, deep breath, that's it. That's fine. Why don't you pull up your trousers and come and have a seat and we'll okay. talk it all through. Let's have a look. That was in the past, okay. Um, your testicles, from my point of view, feel normal. Right. Um, and your prostate felt fine. Mm -hmm. um, slightly enlarged, but a normal, normal shape. Mm -hmm. um, and what's reassuring is there's they. They feel normal. They do exactly. With, with testicular cancer, the um, if it's causing a, a heaviness to mm. the testicles, they do feel remarkably different actually from right. normal. They really feel very heavy from our point of view. So the fact that yours don't feel like that and they're a normal shape, no extra lumps, is yeah. very reassuring. 
in terms of the erection yeah. change and the low libido, yeah. it might be worth checking your prostate blood test, but also your testosterone, mm -hmm. just to, to, to make sure there's no sign that um, either one of those is abnormal, just as a, um, so that we're covering all the bases, yeah. really. Okay? Yep. All right. Thank you very much, Not Lee. at all. Nice Thanks. to see you. Stop me if it's sore when I'm doing this, OK? Right. It's still wet and red. And Sorry? It's still wet. And red. And red, and there's, red. there's exudate covering it. We'll take a swab, but we, we also need to do something as well. We can't just leave it like that. Let me just touch this on the end. Sorry if this is a little bit sore. Ah, sorry. Sorry. OK, all done. Did you see a small little hole in there still, no? I can't see the eardrum. It would be better to have you seen by the surgeon that did the operation, yeah. but it's not a complicated problem. It needs to be looked at and it needs, pro it needs investigation. So I think that is probably the way to go, that we can, get you, we can get you seen in that clinic. Can you give me tablets for it or anything to...? We can give you some tablet antibiotics. Yeah, that would be nice if I can hit it with that. So I'm, a, I'm oxycillin, yeah? We'll hit it with that. We'll try. Yeah, no worries, Doc. You no guys problem. do a great job, so, you know. All right. Thank you for your time. No problem. Lovely to meet you. And you. Wrong way. Wow. That way. <laughs> do you know what we're discussing that? And do you know why? Thanks for coming. Hello. Hi, can I pick up a prescription, please? Hello. 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 How are you doing? Oh, um, well, I'm not doing very well at all. Really, I'm getting out of breath. Mm. It all seemed to have happened um, in the last month, really. Just getting worse. Um, I'm not sleeping well. I only had Saturday night. Um, I just couldn't breathe. Have you seen the surgeons yet? Well, they said my, um, ventricle in the heart mm. so it was closing up slowly yeah. and that was why they said I should go see about having something put in yeah. to widen it up again yeah. and I assume that's causing all the shortness of breath suddenly isn't it? Yeah well if they do surgery they they will probably try to do it as minimally invasive as possible so they might yeah. do it by going in via the wrist or via the groin and yeah. trying to open up the um, the valve that way. Yeah. I mean, if I was going to yeah. go, fine. Yeah. But if I'm going to find I'm worse off... Yeah. Yeah. There are some, some risks of, of people having a stroke and things like that during this type of procedure. Yes. The worst case would be that you, that you didn't make it through. Yeah. Um, but I think if you do nothing, I think your symptoms are, are steadily becoming quite a lot worse, aren't yeah. they? I felt I needed to make him aware that, you know, he, his illness is a life-threatening condition and the natural process of that condition will be that he will steadily deteriorate and eventually die, albeit in, a, in an unpredictable time frame. What do you think, if I didn't have it done, Probably what? I've got about a year. I think that's notoriously ri just so yeah, such a difficult thing to yeah. to be able to predict. I think. Yeah. Um, I mean, my main thing is not so much going, but uh, I don't want to find I'm going to spend months almost like a vegetable. Doctors um, most certainly should not always intervene to save a patient's life through treatment. Um, it completely depends on the individual situation and the individual patient, of course. In medicine, um, we always try to um, do good and not do harm. Um, and so, in some cases, intervention can cause more harm than good. And if they choose to decline a treatment, then um, you, you have to respect their wishes and, and respect that that's their choice. I think we just need to really await this appointment with the cardiothoracic yeah, surgeon. Yeah, and if anything, obviously, it suddenly gets worse, I suppose, even if you... If you, you know, if things become, you know, very critical and that overnight... Yeah. ..then, you know, 111, or if you feel it's a real dire emergency, then 999. Yeah. OK? Yes. 
Okay. Um, yeah, nothing I knew about. Yeah. <laughs> when the time comes, whether I will have intervention or not, I think it is a you know it very much depends on the the situation, and I think until that time comes, I I can't probably easily predict uh, my decision, but. Um, within reason, I'm sure I would mostly want something done, if at all possible. Oh, all right. OK. Thanks for your help. You're welcome. Take care. What can we do for you? OK. Very simple. I have a hemorrhoid, and it's um, excruciating. It can be Isn't painful. It? Yes. Um, yesterday, had um, some spots of blood on toilet tissue. OK. You've had these before, presumably, or...? Many years ago. Though. Right. Yeah. And you're fitting well otherwise? Yes. Should we have a look? You can. <laughs> yeah, I've had a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I'm going to Italy next week, and I'll just talk. Please go. Yeah. Just go before I go to this. <clears throat> oh, yeah, OK. I'm just going to... Just tell me to stop if it's too tender. I'm yeah, just going to put my finger inside. That is a nasty pick. It doesn't actually look like it's thrombosed yet, which is what happens sometimes. Right. When they get sort of clotted and then they become sort of per almost permanent. Right, you get yourself dressed, I'll decide what to do. Now, when are you going away? Um, Tuesday. <clears throat> there is a sort of rapid access... What sort of piles clinic, if I want a better <laughs> word, that runs at St George's, but it's on a Thursday, as far as I remember. I'll be gone. I'll be gone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to, um, well, we're, we're going to southern Italy. Bari, do you know it? I don't know. Uh, sounds yeah. nice, though. And whilst we're there, I'm proposing. So, we shall see. <laughs> so, you really want these under control, don't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is it all planned then? Have you got a? Have you got a? Yeah, uh, bought the ring. I thought I'd just go for a, a nice stroll across the beach, and then just go down and one the yeah, as the sun's coming down, and if it all goes well. If anything doesn't, she's going in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think the thing to do really at this point is, is to treat it as much as you can. Okay. Now it's actually it's on the sort of anal verge, so it's partly in, partly out, and, and as far as I can examine, there, were, there was a suggestion of some little ones slightly higher up as well. Mm, right. So what I will give you is some suppositories yep. and some ointment as well. Okay. So what do I do with the suppositories? Just push them off. Delightful. Right. Okay. All right. Yep. Thank well, you. I hope it settles down. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Have, okay. Bye now. Have a good day. Thank you. There was this Can't woman who came in and she wanted to register her unborn child. <laughs> and I was like, well, if it's not actually like on the earth yet, I can't like register it. <laughs> and I was like, wait till it comes, you know? Come in. Come and have a seat. Okay. Yes. You've had a rough few days, haven't have, you? Yeah. What does the pain feel like to you? As if I've been beaten. Really? What about when you lay down? You can't oh, lay down. I can't lay down pain. on my back. I can't put my back down. Um, do you want to take your jacket off? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and if I press. Oh, yeah. It's sore, isn't it? Mm. Oh, oh, it's sore all along oh, yeah. there, isn't it? Oh, yeah, it's bad. Goodness me. Mm. Do you want to lie down? You can show me where it hurts. <laughs> Might be useful. Because obviously, we know you've got osteoporosis and. Your back is curved. I mean, sometimes you can get little Ooh. fractures in the spine. Where's that hurting you? Ooh, right across the... Oh, 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 you see. Let me know if I hurt you. Ow. You won't enjoy this too much. Oh, <gasps> sorry. Ah. Oh, oh, that's so oh, hard. Oh, dear me, dear me. Oh. I had the constant pain in this area. The pain goes from side to side. Ooh, I feel so weak. Oof, it's a cyst. I won't do any more. Pain is bad. I mean, not pain. Mm, I can see that. Oh. Where's that, sir? All across there. See, I've only got to move. 
I can't go on the back. No. Because of it, no. but it's because hurting so across here. Because the pain at the front. Yeah. yeah. This is difficult for me to sleep in there. Oh, it's agony. There's obviously pain in the chest there, which looks like it's coming from the, the muscles and the bones rather Why than coming that? from the lungs. Well, it's difficult to know. I mean, you can get an inflammation of the cartilages there called costochondritis. It's like an inflammation of the, the, the costal cartilages, basically. Come on, you sit Ooh, up, make yourself comfy. Yeah, mm. Any movement like that. I'm in agony all the time. I went to the hospital, but I mean, they weren't particularly bothered. They were so. bothered, Mum. That's why they gave you the painkillers and the mm. antibiotics. Mm. But you've no idea the pain I'm in. We do. I can see. It's all so depressing. Oh, see, it's only that I sort of pulled myself up and, and, oh. and it gets you. Oh. There is always the possibility of, um, Queen, you know, Queen Mary's Hospital has Bryson White Ward, which is like a rehabilitation type ward. Mm -hmm. If we're finding it difficult to manage the pain at home, I mean. We're back calling it respite. I mean, is it something that you would consider? I don't know. You're wow. in pain, Mum. I don't want to go in hospital. But it's it's not like going into an acute hospital. No. It's kind. Of, it's like um, it's more of like a rehabilitation yeah. type unit. Mrs. Emanuel, I've known for a long time, and she is a fiercely independent lady. Um, she always comes in looking immaculately dressed. Her her house is is immaculate and. I think she's very proud of that and wants to be at home for as long as possible. Um, but things had really come to a crisis point because, unfortunately, she's recently been diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and we weren't sure whether she was remembering to take her painkillers. I guess the benefit of going somewhere like Bryson White would be that we could hopefully get you better yes. quicker. Yes. Should I make some inquiries anyway? I can make some inquiries. Yeah? I don't really want to, I want to stay in my own home. But Mum, you need assistance. You do need, need some, help. some help. At the moment, you need some help. I mean, I think if I was in Mrs Emanuel's position, I, like her, would probably be the same. I mean, no one wants to lose their sense of um, independence and autonomy and to feel that other people are making decisions for you. I'm not saying it's going to be forever. No, no. So leave it with me. Um, am I able to get you on the phone later, John? Yes, yeah. you've got my number. Yeah, I've got your number. Mm. All right. So. All right, do you want a hand? Any move. Got it. There we go. Thank you. OK. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye. See you later. I'm really proud to be part of the NHS. It's the largest publicly funded health service in the world. And it means that everybody, regardless of wealth and income, has access to good health care. Gracias. Thank you. Bye. Bye. People often ask me, well, what is it to be British? And I think the NHS is a fundamental part of what it is to be British and um, something that I'm very proud of and I think we should all be proud of. Thank you.